This is NNN's new Think tool, and I'm pairing it with OpenAI's brand new 4.1 model, and it adds a small but important upgrade to how your AI agents work. Now, in this video, I will show you exactly what the Think tool does by running through a few examples where the agent catches some bad input, makes judgment calls, and avoids mistakes. We will also go over when to actually use this Think tool and when not to. So anyway, let's just jump right into the first demo. So what we have right here is we have just a simple tools agent. You can see we're connecting this to Airtable. So we have our project management system right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up this chat and I'm going to say, I need you to get my tasks for me, then add a task to book a haircut. Let's go ahead and type this out. We can see firstly, it's going to get the task. It's going to try to update the task but it's also going to run through the think tool. And in a second, let's see what else it does. So now it's just going to connect to this Slack route. And if we pull up Slack, we will see that we had an issue. So it's saying I'm encountering a repeated error when attempting to add a new task, book a haircut. So there was invalid input for the status. And this happens whether or not I specify status as to do. So here's my logic breakdown. And then it just goes on to tell me exactly what's happening, giving me some more specified insights into the error. And if you're new to NAN, typically these errors don't look like this. And now it's much more expansive. So let's just go ahead and actually diagnose what went wrong right here. If we open up this add or update task. So we didn't input the ID. We also didn't input the status right here. So if we just back up, we open up the agent, we can go to our logs and we can see everything that actually happens step by step. So we have the open AI chat model, nothing too crazy going on here. The getting task, open AI chat model again, and then the think tool we go down here. So the query was the add task operation failed to missing required input for status. So the system requires a status value when adding a new task, typically to do in progress or done. Now, since the user wants to add a new reminder to book a haircut, the logical default status should be to do. What we've actually done is we told this AI agent, well, if we scroll down to the system message, maybe if I open it up a little bit, we can see that I just directed the agent to go through the think tool. And if anything is going to go wrong, if there's any sort of errors, I want you to send a Slack message to my team so that they'll be notified of what exactly happens. You could do something like this if you wanted to before this update, but now you could just provide more deep analysis to all of your errors that actually incur. So now if we just back up, we're going to take the advice of our think tool and we're just going to try to fix this really quick. So let me go ahead and just move this over. Let's put in a status. Maybe we can just do to do for the time being. We could do the ID of, you know, we could actually probably leave the ID alone. But now let's try this again. So let's say get my task for me, then add a task to book a haircut. We'll see it's going to go through the get task, do all that properly, go through the add or update task. But now let's just go into our Airtable. We can see now that we have everything in here. Now we didn't go through this thing tool this time because we direct our agent to only use this if things were to go wrong. But there's a lot more times where you will want to use this think tool. Maybe if you are adding a bunch more tools or maybe if you're adding a bunch more workflows and connecting different things to your agents, you'll want to have this think tool just think through everything and really just analyze, okay, well, now that I've finished everything, maybe I should slow down and just make sure that I've done everything properly and make sure that this output is exactly what the user is wanting or has specified. So it's like using a reasoning model, but without actually having to use the external reasoning model. Like if we were go to OpenAI, if we wanted to use something like O3 or O4, something like that, you know, we're going to be saving a lot of time and we're going to be saving a lot of money because it's not going to have to go through all of that stuff, use all of the different tokens and spend up all of your money. Now, really quick, I just wanted to mention that if you are interested in videos like this, learning how to either build automation, sell automations to business, owners or implementing them within your own business, then check out my free school community. We have a bunch of videos similar to this. We also have thousands of other members. I believe we're now at 4,500 or at least close to it. So there's a lot of other people on the same path as you. You'll be able to, you know, chat with anybody else, you know, partner up with anybody who's looking to start an AI company or anything like that. Also, you get direct access to messaging me whenever you would like. So go ahead and check that out. It's completely free, but Anyways, let's go ahead and get back into the video. So now that you guys have actually seen this, I want to just break this down a little bit further before I show you guys some more examples and get into another demo. So let's just break this down on what the Think Tool actually is. And in its simplest form, it's just a built in step in NNN that gives your agents, you know, just a moment to pause and think. So when the agent just runs into something unexpected, maybe like a missing value or a tool response, like you saw that it wasn't expecting, it can just stop and write out what it sees, what is unclear and what it thinks that it should do next. Now I should preface that the think tool, it doesn't send messages. It doesn't modify data or call any other services. And it's actually there to give the agent just some space to reason through the situation in plain English. So this agent, it uses the information that it already has 
and writes a short reflection about what is happening and what it should be doing. And while that might sound pretty basic, it is incredibly helpful because instead of manually building the logic for every edge case or tool failure, the agent could just start self-managing these decisions by really thinking through them before continuing on. So to understand where this concept comes from and why it actually matters, we can look at the team that popularized it. So Anthropic, also known as the creators of Claude, as you should know, when they were building multi-step agents, they just realized that these models often make mistakes when they're jumping directly from one tool to the next one without stopping to consider what just happened. So what they've done is they just introduced a deliberate reasoning step in between these actions. So this think step, it's just helping the model actually take a pause consider the tool outputs and write down what it believed was happening and what it should do next. So the research, it actually found that it worked especially well when agents dealt with unclear or incomplete data, you know, when multiple steps had to be chained together in sequence or maybe when strict rules or policies have to be followed. Now, on the other hand, Anthropic also noted that adding a think step, it wasn't always necessary. And if you think about it, in fact, could hurt the performance in these workflows. Like let's say they were dead simple, like sending a message or just updating a field. Those are, so those are pretty linear, pretty simple, right? So their advice in mind to you is to treat the think tool just like any other part of your system use it when it adds value, but don't overuse it where it doesn't. So you will have to use a little bit of common sense. You know, of course, just employ the strategies and tactics that you've been using thus far if you've been doing pretty well on your own. So one of the best real world use cases for this thing tool, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be this error handling, especially in workflows where you just normally get vague or technical error messages. So let's say a tool fails or returns data that's just not formatted correctly. So without this thing tool, the workflow might just break or log a generic error or just quietly do nothing at all, which would suck. But with this tool now, your agent can just stop taking the failed response and then actually write exactly out what it thinks went wrong. So for example, if instead of logging API call failed, your agent might just say the Airtable call didn't work because the customer email field was empty. Then it could say like, please check that field before retrying, something like that. So this just gives you instantly useful information without having to sift through error logs or just guess what happened. So it's also going to make it easier to notify the right team members in Slack or by email, whatever channel you're really using within your team. And you can even have the think tool just decide whether the workflow should retry and do it again, take a pause or escalate the issue. So you could take a few different options. So in short, it's really just going to make your automations easier to debug and far more transparent, especially if you aren't a developer or know how to code much. Now, before we get into the demo, another underrated benefit I want to highlight of using this thing tool is that it can just help you reduce your API costs, especially if you are frequently calling external models like let's say GPT or Claude. So before, anytime that you needed your agent to reason about something, like whether it was to figure out what went wrong or just decide between multiple different options, you would have to send a prompt to external LLMs. So I mean, that just means paying for tokens every single time that the agent tries to think, and it could be expensive. And if you're also running workflows at scale, those costs are gonna pile up pretty fast. But now with this thing tool built directly inside of N8N, you know, completely native, you can offload some of that reasoning to actually happen inside of your own workflow. So the agent, it can just reflect and document and respond pretty intelligently without burning any extra tokens that you have for every thought process. And this doesn't just eliminate the need for these LLMs entirely. You know, you're still going to have to call GPT or Claude when you need true language understanding, but it does allow you to reduce how often those calls are going to happen, especially when you're pairing this thing with conditional logic, Airtable checks, Slack alerts, you know, this tool becomes a much cheaper way to handle basic decision making right inside of your automation, which is pretty awesome. Now, of course, the think tool, it isn't something that you need to just plug into every single automation as I previously highlighted. And in fact, there's going to be many cases where using it is probably gonna just slow you down or complicate things unnecessarily. So if your workflow is simple and predictable, like sending a thank you email, logging a new lead in Airtable, or just posting a message to Slack, there's really not much of a need for the agent to pause and think. So I mean, those kinds of tasks don't have ambiguity. They don't require reasonable reasoning. So you know exactly what the tool should do and there's just no decision to make. So in those cases, I would recommend just to let the workflow run as fast and direct as possible. So using the think tool in those scenarios, it's literally just like putting a speed bump on a straight highway. It's just going to slow everything down without adding any sort of value for you. So instead just use it only when there's uncertainty, you know, like when your agent has to maybe decide what to do based on a condition 
a tool output or a missing piece of information. So just think of it more like a safety net rather than a default step that you always have to implement into your workflows. So now let's just jump into another quick demo. So we have right here another tools agent. Now we've just connected some more tools right here. So we have a delete event, create event with attendee, getting events, create event, update event, think tool, Slack node, Gmail. So if we open this up, let's just say I would like you to send an email to Nick and say, hi, how are you? Something pretty simple. Then I need you to get my events and then create an event with Nick using the same email for tomorrow at let's say 9 p.m. Eastern time for 30 minutes about AI. Let's type this out. Let's see what is going to happen. So we are using the 4.1, as you can see right here. We're using the 4.1. It's going to create an event, get the event, and everything looks like it ran through properly. So we don't have any errors here. So it didn't have to use the think tool. But what we can actually do is if we would like to, we could just add something down at the bottom. So what we can say here is I would like you to run through this think tool if we are ever making more than two requests, or maybe you would want to say three requests, four requests, five requests. You know, usually when you're getting to those higher numbers is where you might experience some errors within your agent. In that particular instance, that's where you're going to want to use this think tool. So that's what I would recommend for you. Let's just go ahead and provide a quick error. So let's do get events. Let's go to remove one of these things. Maybe we will remove the after and the before. Let's remove these. Let's see if anything goes wrong. So let's just try this again. I'm just going to copy my message and we'll see what happens. So it's going to first try to get the events after it sends an email. Let's see if it runs through the thing tool. So it's going to run through this and then it's going to send a Slack message. Let's just quickly investigate what it sent us. So it says, hi, I attempted to fetch your calendar events as requested, but there was an internal error in the process. The email to Nick was sent successfully. Please let me know if you want to try fetching your calendar again or if you need further assistance troubleshooting this error. So it didn't get too in depth, but let's just investigate what it actually happened in these logs and see if it provided us anything insightful. We can see I need to analyze the failure. The calendar fetch function failed due to an internal error. So I will alert the Slack user to notify them and try to troubleshoot the cause of the error before proceeding. Maybe in the future, we would like to say something like, before you notify the user, I want you to first retry the issue and see if it fixes itself. Because sometimes it's not going to always be an issue like this where you know the logic is just completely empty. Maybe it will be something simple, like it required a different input but are structured in a different way, a different format, something like that. Ultimately, this is just gonna be a great way for you to be more efficient and more practical when it comes to reasoning and going through all your different prompts properly. So maybe this time we can say, if we request more than two actions, you must always run through the think tool to ensure that we are forming all the steps properly. Okay, so now let's just back out. Let's fix this issue really quick and let's see if it runs through this think tool properly. So let's just see, we do have more than two requests here, right? So we have email to Nick Peru and then get my events, send an event. Yeah, so it should run through the think tool properly now and let's see what we get. It's going to run through the think tool first and you know, we'll see what the output actually looks like for that. It's going to send the email, create the event, get the event, do all that stuff. It doesn't send the Slack message because we said we only wants you to send a Slack message if there's an error and you can't fix it. Let's open this up, see what we got in these logs. So the user wants three things, send an email to Nick, get calendar events, schedule a new event with Nick. Since there are more than two actions required, I'll use this tool to confirm the steps and sequences for proceeding. So sending the email is independent, but getting events and scheduling should be in parallel if possible, unless there's a need to check for conflicts. I will proceed to send the email, fetch events, and create the event in parallel, paying attention to the time zone and event duration. Honestly, that went perfectly and better than I imagined. Now, to just all this up in a practical way. Let's recap when and how to use this think tool effectively. So overall, you should definitely use this think tool when you're dealing with uncertain data, when your workflow depends on maybe multiple tools that are going to interact in sequence or when tool outputs might be unreliable or perhaps incomplete. It's also a great fit when you're working in regulated environments or if you need to just make sure that your agents stick to some sort of strict rule and logic. If you're trying to improve your error handling or you want better, clear messages when something fails, this think tool is going to be amazing and one of the best things that you can actually add for yourself. And finally, if you're trying to just cut down on token costs for external LLM calls, pretty lightweight ways to actually handle the reasoning 
without paying for it every single time. Now, on the flip side, I wouldn't use it for simple flows. So if a step is just going to work the same way every time, or if the tool output is maybe clean and predictable, you're better off just skipping this thing tool and maybe letting the automation run clean and fast. So bottom line, just treat the thing tool as a decision helper, not a default. Use it to make your agent smarter, not slower. So anyways, guys, that's the new thing tool within n It's not really a huge flashy upgrade or magic feature, but it is a smart and practical way to just make your agents more thoughtful and your workflows more reliable. So it's just going to give your automations, you know, a chance to really pause, reflect, and just make better decisions, you know, especially in scenarios that would probably normally require a ton of custom logic, manual intervention, or just repeated debugging. And even though it is pretty simple, it does open the door to much more error handling systems, clearer communication, and of course, lower operating costs, which we are all for. So if you guys did find this video helpful or valuable in any sort of way, please click the like, subscribe, and comment down below. Just let me know what you think. And again, if you guys are interested in joining my community, where you get access to a lot of my templates seen on YouTube, a lot of course videos going over how to sell automations, how to build automations, how to use them in the real world, like implementing them into your actual business, and just being able to communicate with a bunch of other AI entrepreneurs, all interested in the same thing, scaling their business or selling more solutions. So I implore you guys to go check that out for yourself. It's completely free. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Please drop a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.